Welcome to Big Data and Brews. I'm Andrew Brust with Datamere. We're here at Strata Plus Hadoop World, live in San Jose, California. And we have with us today Jacques Nadeau of Dremio. Hi there. Uh, how are you? Good, good. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I think we're going to have brews and spirit. No, okay. No, no we're gonna have spirits intended. Instead? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, uh, what time is it? About 11 in the morning, yes, I think. Yes. So maybe, maybe we're, uh, we're granted an exception today. Yes. Um, so I knew you from your days at MapR. Mm -hmm. You're now CTO at a new company mm -hmm. called Dremio. And um, Dremio seems to have a, a, a close relationship with an interesting open source project called Apache Arrow. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. We actually uh, worked very closely with a bunch of different open source organizations as well as a number of companies uh, to launch Apache Arrow last month. And um, Apache Arrow, uh, actually, uh, we've had another guest here today, and we were we were already discussing Apache Arrow. Uh, with him, it seems to involve a number of contributors and also a number of vendors, even if they're not necessarily acting on behalf of their companies. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of there's a lot of industry cooperation, de facto industry cooperation, around this project. And as I understand it, it went straight to top level status. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know, most Apache Software Foundation projects go through what's called the incubator for a while first just really kind of to see if the project has legs and allow it to mature. You guys went straight to uh, straight to graduation, basically. That, that's exactly right. And it really has to do with what we're doing and who's involved, right? So what happened was is that we saw a, so Arrow, before it was known as Arrow, um, started last summer. We were talking to a bunch of people and seeing a lot of common patterns. Basically, people struggling with the same kinds of things, which is, is that, okay, we've got disks fast enough, we're reading off of disks fast enough, but we want to do uh, query execution, ana data analysis, data science, machine learning, those kinds of things. The bottleneck starts to become the CPU. And so you're like, okay, well, how can we make better use of the CPU? Right. And that's really the core of what Arrow is about. It's saying, hey, let's you come up with a set of data structures which do a much better job of taking advantage of the CPU's capabilities and use that more efficiently. And so that was really a bunch of different groups were recognizing the same pain point. And so whether you talk about sort of the, the Databricks guys when they were talking about Spark and Tungsten, they're like, hey, we want to make these things go faster. We want to figure out how to do better things with cache locality and that kind of thing. Or you look at, say, the Impala research paper that came out last year, I think it was, and I'm talking about how Impala was built, one of the sort of key sort of notes at the bottom of that paper was, hey, we would really like to move to a canonical in-memory representation, right? So with the drill stuff that I've been working on as well, we also saw that- Drill being another Apache open source yes, yes, project, sir. this one kind of focused on SQL on everything. That's exactly right, Hadoop yes. Hadoop being one of those things, but not the thing. Yes, yeah, so, so my main role at, at MapR was really driving the, the, the Apache drill uh, initiative, right. and, and, and and building that into a sort of very powerful processing engine. And so as part of that, we started to experiment a lot with in-memory columnar. And so if you think about the world, it's kind of like, you know, crawl, walk, run. And in the case of data, it's typically, so crawl is going to be so your, your, your row-wise uh, execution. Uh, sort of walk will be something along the lines of an in-memory execution, and run is really about columnar in-memory execution, and that's really where everybody wants to go. Where maybe you can operate on whole, whole batches, not batch in the Hadoop, so slow batch. Yes, yeah, no, not, not that but batch, bunches, but yes. Bunches of rows at, at once. Yes, that's exactly right. And so basically we break down data into a chunks of data, right. and then we orient it so that data that's similar is together, right? So for example, if you've got an integer column and a var car or a string column, mm -hmm. right? Normally the way that data is held in memory is as a row-wise representation where it's going to be integer string, integer string in the memory. And so if the CPU wants to interact with only integers, it has to like step over strings all the time. Sure. Okay? And that means that you spend a lot more time retrieving data from main memory, bringing it into the CPU cache, and the CPU is sort of stepping over that thing. You also have to always look at how long each of those strings are before you know where the next integer is. Okay? So what we do is we orient things differently so that integers are by themselves and strings are by themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is a simple example, but integers are by themselves and strings are by themselves. And in that situation, 
if you just want to interact with integers, you can you have the CPU can just see the integers, knows exactly how they're offset from each other, and be very, very efficient pulling that data from main memory into CPU cache, right? And so that provides a huge amount of benefit to end user applications, right? And so that's one of the really sort of amazing things about Arrow is Arrow and, and, and cache can be most people don't know, but cache is even faster than RAM. Yes. RAM is not the holy grail. Yes. No, fact. absolutely. Uh, that's exactly. Like, what's happening now is, is we're getting more and more main memory, but the main memory is not as fast as the CPU can work. Right. And so, just like it's way slower to have something on disk than have it into in, in memory, the same is true between memory and CPU in terms of latency differences. Okay? And so, the CPU, if the CPU actually has to go to main memory to get something because it's not in its cache, you can actually slow down the CPU substantially, 10 to 100x times. So I think of those algorithmic trading guys who want to have their offices as close to the exchange as possible because it, it lowers the amount of wire miles between them and those machines and lets them execute milliseconds faster. Maybe it's not quite at that split hair level, but it's sort of the it, same it, principle, it's, 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 it? it's, it's exactly the same, right? right? And the, the distance here is as close, as close to the CPU as possible, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, that's, and that's what it's all about, is, is everybody, everybody who's doing analytics wants it to go faster. It doesn't matter how fast you go, they're going to always want it to go faster. And so recognizing what those opportunities are is sort of the key to all of this, right? And so that's why, so as you mentioned, right, there's a bunch of different people involved, right? So you see people from the Impala project, the Phoenix project, the CalSite project, the HBase project, there's people from Hadoop itself. We've got people from Deep Learning 4J. We've got Spark people. We've got uh, the drill people are involved. A bunch of different groups are all involved you in mentioned this. Parquet? I didn't mention Parquet, but I All should right. have. Okay. Like there's, there's 16 or 17 different technology, people, developers from different technologies that are involved now, so I, I no they, longer And can, they feel each other's pain, apparently. Yeah, absolutely, right? Yeah. And that's the key to all of this, right? Is, is that, is that, and this is the whole op, op, sort of open source opportunity, right? Is, is that people recognizing a common need and right. working together to solve that, right? And, and why Arrow, we'd be able to do what we did with Arrow is because it's a foundational component, right? It's something that can be embedded into each of these different technologies, so so it doesn't isn't perceived as a threat to any particular technology, right. right? And so the exciting part for the end user that's so so the so th there's a bunch of dynamics, right? In terms of how you get this kind of thing off the ground, the first set of dynamics are all around making sure that these people are collaborating and and have sort of their their sort of goals aligned, right? But then the second piece is, is this obviously has to be very important to end users for everybody to spend the time against it, right? And so obviously number one, faster performance is huge, right? But the second thing that Arrow brings is it brings the ability to move data between systems more efficiently. Okay, and this means that you don't. If you want to, so the, I was in a session just yesterday with Wes McKinney from Cloud Era, and what we were talking about there was being able to move data very, very efficiently between execution engines and machine learning uh, languages like Python and R, as well as sort of doing machine learning inside of Spark, right? And because so because if everything has its own in-memory format, then you'll need to, as you go from one component to the other, you'll need to serialize out and then load it back in in, in, in the second format. That's, that's and exactly so right. Forth. Yeah, so you're constantly, so you, what happens is you look at these workloads and you see a huge amount of time being spent in serialization and deserialization, which is basically just wasted work, right? Right. And so what happens is people say, okay, well, I'm going to try to sort of approach things with a monolithic approach, whereas like, I'm going to just try to use one system because right. I don't want to pay that overhead. But that means that a bunch of your tech, sort of your people inside the organization have to learn a new technology in order to do with their job, right? And so the opportunity here is, is that you can move data between different systems at zero cost, right? Which means that end users can use the technology that they're comfortable with. And then the sort of knock-on effect to all of this is, is that once you start to share memory between these systems, you can actually work with larger data sets with the same hardware. And the reason is, is that right now people will use multiple different systems to interact with the same common working data set. Um, so and they're getting copies of the basically, Yeah, basically sense. you're going to have copies of data sets in memory, one for each different application, right? And so if you have a shared representation, you can have one copy in memory, and everybody can just use that, and therefore, obviously, you can have a much larger data set. Okay, I think I get it. We're, good. We're, we're getting technical here, but this is kind of a technical thing, so I think that's all right. Yeah. So it seems like, you know, in memory, in general, has been a very hot thing across the industry. There's a lot of consensus around that broadly, but then implementation-wise, pretty much every project and every product has been handling the in-memory representation of data differently. Mm -hmm. And if you can come up with a common uh, representation, it seems like nobody's really objecting to that. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's low level enough, it's a, it's a common cause, such that pride of ownership isn't a problem and people are 
happy to uh, to have a standard there. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think that you, the way to understand it is, is it's not just that it's in memory, right? So actually most of these engines already have an ability to do in memory execution, right? The next step is, is in memory commoner, and that's really where you take advantage of CPUs at a, at a greater level, right. okay? And so the problem and why it hasn't happened already, right? If everybody knows that something is a good idea, why doesn't it happen? It's because it's very, very hard, right? So we're talking about in-memory commoner, we're talking about in-memory complex shredded commoner, okay? Which means that we're not just dealing with rows and columns. We all know that data looks like JSON these days, right? It's complex objects, it's documents, right? And so building a system that can do in-memory commoner is very difficult. Building an in-memory commoner system that can work with complex data is even more complicated, right? And so it's not the lack of desire, it's the fact that it's a very difficult task, and right? And that's why everybody is, is attracted to this, is that we can work together to build something that's never been built at this level of quality and this level of capability before. It's interesting, too, because columnar stuff comes up in analytics all the time, but that's more around just having all the values in a given column together so you can table scan and aggregate easily. This is actually about making things more compact mm -hmm. and thus being able to take advantage of modern yeah. CPU technologies. Yeah, yeah. Well, as, you, as you said earlier, right, this gets a little bit technical, but the high level is, is that columnar storage, things that are sitting on disk, right? Mm. We've been talking about columnar storage for years. Like one of the guys that's at uh, Dremio, uh, a guy named Jul Julien Ledem, uh, invented uh, Parquet, which is basically this, the, the de facto standard for on disk columnar representation, right. right? And so people have been taking advantage of that capability for some time and it makes it much more efficient how quickly you can get to the data on disk, right? But what happened historically was is that the moment the data moved into memory, it moved from a columnar representation to a row wise representation, right? So what we're doing now is we're saying, you know what, the same, the same kinds of benefits that exist on disk, there's similar benefits that exist when you're working with a CPU in memory, and so we should use a columnar representation in memory. And so the fastest systems are going to be those ones that have the columnar storage on disk using something like Parquet, and then bring that into memory and use Arrow to process that in a columnar way in memory. So the journalist in me wants to know what you guys at Dremio are up to. <laughs> how much can you how much can you share today? Yeah, yeah. Well, we we established Dremio last year. We're about 20 people now, and we've got a, a huge number of people involved in things like Aero and Parquet and uh, Calcite, and we've got people that worked on the Oracle Flash Cache and people who worked in Twitter's data, big data pipeline. Um, bringing together a bunch of experts in this space to really make it a lot easier to get to data. Okay. <laughs> Um, and that's pretty much all I can say right now. We haven't launched yet, but one of the things I can say is, is, is that as a new company, we obviously are focused on the things that are very important to us, and Arrow we see as a huge opportunity and something that's going to be a core sort of foundational component to what we're building. Well, that makes sense. Certainly when, uh, when I first learned about it, I thought it was pretty important. I raised, I raised the alarm bells here at Datamere, and I wanted everyone to read about it. So yeah, yeah. we'll be looking forward to you guys uh, coming out of your stealthy mode and to a place where we uh, we know what you're up to and we see some things productized. Yeah. And uh, in the meantime, thanks for being on Big Data and Brews. Yeah, yeah, thanks appreciate for your time. It. Really appreciate it.